Hello kids and families, I'm Vicar Kate and I am so excited to be with you today to share today's Sunday School story. We miss you and we miss being together, um, but I am really happy that we get to stay connected and to share God's love this way. This week's story is about Joseph and his brothers, and so I thought that I would introduce you to my brother. This is my brother, Scott. This is my brother, Scott, before I was born. Look at how happy he is. This boy is living the dream. And then I came along. And I cried a lot. And I took a lot of work to take care of. And especially as we got older, Scott had to start sharing with me. And I could be really annoying, sometimes on purpose. Even though Scott and I were really good buddies, we didn't always get along. Here we're getting along, and here we're not. Here we are getting along again, and here we're not. Okay, one more. Here we're getting along, and here we're not. Do you have siblings? I bet that you always get along with your siblings, right? Maybe not. <laughs> Our story for today is about a time when Joseph really didn't get along with his brothers. Let's read it together. Jacob lived with his family in a place called Canaan. He had many sons. One of Jacob's younger sons was named Joseph. Jacob spent more time with Joseph than with his other sons. He even had a special coat made for Joseph. It seemed to Joseph's brothers that their father loved Joseph more than he loved them, and they felt sad and angry. One night, Joseph had a dream. The next morning, he couldn't wait to tell everyone about it. I had a dream we were all in the field tying stems of grain together. Suddenly, I couldn't believe my eyes. Your grain made a circle around mine and then bent over. You were bowing down to me. Isn't that exciting? exclaimed Joseph. Our grain did what? They laughed. Why do you think that we would bow down to you like you were some kind of king? The brothers said angrily. Joseph hung his head and walked away, slowly and sadly. The next night, Joseph had another dream. He excitedly told everyone about it in the morning. I had an even better dream last night. I looked up into the sky and there I was. I saw the sun, the moon, and eleven stars bow down to me. Isn't that amazing, he said. This time his father was listening. Jacob was angry with Joseph and said, Why do you think your mother and I would stand next to your brothers and bow down to you as if you were a king? I don't like the strange dreams you're having. They will never come true. Now his brothers and his father were really mad at him. Lucky for Joseph, Jacob decided to send his brothers off with the sheep for a while. Later, Jacob sent Joseph to find out how Joseph's brothers were doing with the sheep. As he was getting near them, his brothers saw him coming. Here comes our dreaming brother. Let's get rid of him, they planned. They grabbed Joseph and threw him into a pit. Ouch! The rocks at the bottom of the pit were hard and sharp. God, why are they doing this to me, prayed Joseph. A group of traders walked by on their way to Egypt. The brothers thought they'd get rid of Joseph once and for all. They sold Joseph to the traders and watched as he was taken away. Oh. Joseph and his brothers had a fight so bad that they traded him and sent him away to Egypt? Oh, I know I've never had a fight that bad before. The story of Joseph is a really long one, and you can keep reading it in your Spark Bible at home if you have one. But the important things to know about the rest of the story is that when Joseph gets to Egypt, he starts to gain power, and he becomes a helper to the Pharaoh. And with God's help, he is able to predict the future through dreams. And in a dream, God shows Joseph that there's going to be a famine in Egypt, which means there's not going to be enough food. And so Joseph helps the Pharaoh and all of Egypt save enough food 
for a time when there won't be enough. And at the end of the story, Joseph is reunited with his brothers. Let's finish the story together. Joseph's family all moved to Egypt, but the brothers were worried. What if Joseph is still angry at us? We were so awful to him. What can we do? The brothers went to Joseph and said, Here we are. We don't deserve to be your brothers anymore, so we will be your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Don't be silly. I'm your brother no matter what. Even though you plan for something bad to happen to me, God turned it into something good. Joseph forgives his brothers and they are reunited. But even better than that, we learn that even when bad things happen in the world, that God is working to make something good come out of the bad. Joseph's brothers made an awful decision to hurt him and to send him to Egypt. But God found a way to use Joseph in Egypt to help a lot of people. And God is with us doing the same thing in our lives. It doesn't mean that bad things don't happen, but it does mean that God is with us when they do and is working to make things better. Let's thank God for that gift. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us our family and siblings that we can learn and grow with, even though sometimes we may fight. And thank you for being with us in the good times and in the bad. Amen. See you next week.